So now what we want to do is we're getting very close to starting the run and route ductwork. Uh, before we get there, we need to set up our preferences to make sure that everything is routing correctly. And one of the ways to start that uh, is using the duct layout preferences. You can access this from the Manage tab, Preferences panel, and then the Duct button. And it brings up this duct layout preferences. Now what you see here is the way that I like to set it up. Um, because we have auto tagging for duct, we do not use labels. Um, it'll interfere with the tags a little bit. Um, if you have auto tagging turned off, you could certainly use labels. Labels are entirely different than tags. Usually the labels are constrained to sit right on the duct. You can change that, uh, but you have to change it for each individual label whereas tags are very easy to move around. Um, so generally, if I'm using auto tag, I have the labels turned off. Elevation changes. I have automatically create a riser at a new elevation. I have that checked, so as I'm going along and I'm drawing duct at the command line, I can just type in E for elevation during the duct add command, and then type in an elevation immediately after that and the duct will rise or drop down to that elevation, put in your elbow, um, and do everything else that's needed in order to get the duct to that elevation. Uh, elbow layout options. This needs to be set to use straight elbow and reducer. Our duct currently uh, does not work with this use reducing elbow option, so this is the option that you need to use. And If you want to have a change elbow in there, you need to change it after you've placed your duct. And then finally up here at the top is the slope format. This might be the one that most people will change uh, the most often. Different shops might display their slopes differently. Uh, but there's several different options there. It's uh, angle is a good one to use. Most people would probably use rise over run. That's what I'm most accustomed to in the piping world. Uh, so, you know, one eighth inch slope uh, would uh, be, you know, riser, drop an eighth of an inch over one foot. So this is something you should have set up. Um, it's, it's simple to do. It takes a couple seconds. You do it in your, your template. Our template should be set up with these settings already, uh, but I believe it is a per template setting. One of the most important things in routing duct to make sure that you have correct are your routing preferences. Your routing preferences specify which duct to insert and these fittings are added automatically as you lay out the duct run. Routing preferences can be used to meet your design standards and your specifications and contain all of your duct parts and duct fittings. That's almost verbatim from the help file. Um, if you just open up the help file again and type in duct routing preferences, you'll get to this text and you can read a lot more about them. Um, they're accessed in the style manager. The style manager is available from the Manage tab, uh, the Style and Display panel, and then the Style Manager drop-down, and then you get to the HVAC routing preferences. And it looks like this. Um, some things to make sure that happen inside the routing preference dialog is your connection type must always be set to flange. That's because all duct, whether it's round, oval, rectangular, or multi-shape, all of the East Coast duct is set to the AutoCAD MEP flange type, even if it does not have a flange. Uh, the reason being is that makes it easy for us to switch the flanges from slip and drive, a TDC, maybe to a raw edge. The flange connector type in AutoCAD MEP is just uh, a flag that's signifying that I can have a flange. It doesn't actually mean it has to have a flange. So let's look at the style manager in AutoCAD MEP, so I'm going to go to the Manage tab, Style Manager drop-down, HVAC routing preferences. I'm going to select one. When I select it, it's going to take uh, just a couple minutes to pop up. Uh, the reason being for the little delay is that uh, when we select the routing preference, it's got to go into your database and query all of the uh, currently loaded parts in your catalog to generate a list for us to set for our routing preference. So you can see a flange. That is the connection type that you must have in order to see the East Coast fittings. 
If you have your catalog loaded and you come into the routing preference and you do not see these fittings, then usually the culprit is this is not set to flange. So basically what you would do for each of these parts, you would come in and you would set the part that you would like to see automatically added. So for a transition around the oval eccentric, I'm just going to choose a round the oval um, LP snap lock because I'm on my two inch pressure class. Maybe if I was on my six inch pressure class, instead of the LP round, I would, I would choose the medium pressure. And so you just come through, your round, your rectangular, your oval, and you go ahead and you set the default parts that you want to see. Um, East Coast duct, uh, we do not, even though we might have crosses and T's um, in our library, we do not support the auto routing of those fittings. Those are fittings that you need to place manually. And then placeholder, uh, unless you're doing load calculations and something that we're not going to talk about in this series, automatic sizing of duct, which AutoCAD MEP is 100% capable of doing, uh, you won't need these placeholders um, fittings at all. Uh, if you want to, just because you want to, then you can go ahead and set them. Routing preferences are important. We'll get a little bit more in depth on to them when we, for sure, 100% next uh, webinar when we're going through actually routing our duct. Uh, so the last thing that I want to talk about today is the system definitions and the options that they offer. Um, a system definition is typically named for the duct system for which it'll be used. Um, you're not going to name a system definition return and then route supplier with it. Um, so you would name it typically for the type of system that the, it is going to be contained within your duct. Uh, system definitions help maintain consistency throughout a run and across multiple drawings. Um, and what I mean by that is in the same way that a routing preference chooses what parts you're going to use in your design, the system definition really decides how those parts are going to look. Um, it sets your layers, your your display style, um, how, how your lining will look, how your insulation will look, all of that sort of thing. And you access it the same way that we found uh, the routing preferences. And we'll do a live demo of that in just a second. And again, as I said, um, a system definition basically determines how your duct will look on paper. It controls your layers through your layer key styles. It controls your rise and drop look through your rise and drop styles. In other words, uh, when you're rising up through an elbow, what does that look like on paper? Um, it controls which routing preference to use. So when you switch your system, you can automatically switch your routing preference. And it also uh, controls the system style display override. Uh, we spent a couple of these open forums on the display system in the past. If you're interested in learning about that, then you can go on to our our uh, website on the portal and if you scroll back to uh, January 28th of this year I did spend some time on system definitions and you'll be able to then look at uh, um, all the types of overrides um, whether it's a system override, an object override, a style override or your drawing default. So let's just look at the system definition real quick. I started this by choosing the system definition drop down here. When I bring that up in the style manager, the only thing I have access to is the duct system definitions. The same thing if I hit the routing preference button. The only thing I have access to is the routing preferences. If I would like to see both of them at once, then what I need to do is just start the style manager. When that comes up, that's going to give you access to every single style in the drawing. So I can come down and expand HVAC objects, and then I'm going to see my system definitions and my routing preferences. So looking at the system definitions real quick, and I'll go to the general tab. It's where we set the name of our system, and you can also set a description of it. Both of these are available uh, through property sets. Design rules. 
<coughs> this is where we set the abbreviation. Uh, the abbreviation can be used in your tags, labels if you use them, your schedules, all of that. It's basically available as a property set, which means you can use it anywhere inside of AutoCAD MEP. System group. Uh, system groups, what they allow you to do is group similar types of duct systems together. So right now uh, in this template, there is just one single system group. But if I was to go ahead and add a, say, a kitchen grease system group, then look at that. What that's going to allow you to do is, let's just make sure that that took. Yes, it did. So now there's duct and kitchen grease. What that means, the system group means is you cannot attach a duct of a different system group to your current system group. So basically, I have a system group of kitchen grease. I can't it won't allow me to attach supply air, return air, exhaust air to that system. Unless, of course, it also belongs to that system group. And it's not going to give you a pop-up warning or anything. It's just you're going to get the exclamation mark anytime you try to connect two systems of differentiating system groups together. The layer key is what sets your layer. And we've spoken about layer keys in the past. And again, we can find them uh, more in depth on uh, our portal website. But basically, uh, the way a layer key works is when you start the duct add command and you choose your system, it looks at the layer key and finds the layer that is assigned to that layer key. It then looks in your drawing and says, does that layer already exist? If it already exists, then it does nothing else. If it doesn't exist, then it creates that layer based on the settings inside of your layer key style. So what's important to note about that is if you already have a drawing that has a layer in it and you go into your layer key style and you make changes to that layer, it is not going to update in that drawing. You would need to purge that layer out of your drawing and then start the duct add command again and then it'll find that that layer is not in the drawing, then it'll create that layer based on the settings. Uh, design parameters, um, we're not really going to speak about this, but if you were automatically sizing your duct, then this would be of importance. Rise and drop styles, so how do you want your duct to look when you um, have a rise or drop in your run? And this is where you would choose that type of style. This is an exhaust system, so we're going to choose an exhaust style. You can create those in the duct rise and drop style section. So the same way you create anything else, you could create those here. Um, I'm not going to spend much time on these other than what we just did. Usually, 99% of the time, the out-of-the-box exhaust, return, and supply are good enough for everyone. Other, um, exclude from 2D section shrink wrap. Uh, what that means is if you have that checked, when you run a section using the AutoCAD MEP section tool, when you run a section through a piece of duct, that it's going to use that entire piece of duct and it won't actually cut the section through it. Uh, it's a little hard to explain and it's something that we'll go over more in the future. Uh, just keep it in the back of your mind if you run if you cut a section through a piece of duct and it doesn't look quite the way you want it to you can come in here and choose this option and it should help routing preference this is where you would set up the routing preference to go along with your system so when I switch systems when I switch to an, running the exhaust system my routing preference is going to automatically switch to my two inch water gauge when I go down to my supply low pressure you can see that my routing preference is also 2 inch. When I select my medium pressure, you can see that it switches to 4 inch. You are, of course, free, and we recommend that you change that routing preference to your own if you happen to change the out-of-the-box naming scheme. It will certainly help with your uh, routing of duct. Display properties, we spoke about this in the past. This is where you could just, uh, apply a style override to the system. 
And a good example of that is if I go to a demo system, you can see that these have style overrides to give it a different look and feel from other dots. And what those are actually doing is just, if we look at this plan real quick, it is using a different layer style for the duct itself to give it that um, hatched and broken line look throughout that you're accustomed to seeing for a demo, demo duct. The setup of your drawings and of your software will make all the difference in the world when it comes to routing your duct quickly and easily. Thanks for coming and we'll see you next time.